the May episode of Namavita Tota. I hope you are all doing good, doing safe and enjoying your spring and excited for the summer coming in. So I'm busy this season. And what I last starts, I am trying to like move things out and almost I moved my plants out. There are a few heat loving vegetables like as, as we have a red spell, I'm just holding off towards end of May, early June. But by the way, most of my starts are out and I'm trying to like also this use the spring as an opportunity to add some more fruits, mainly the berries into my garden. And um, so that kind of a work is what going on in my garden here. Yeah, in order to I'm like moving my vegetables um, out. The ones I started with uh, from seeds, uh, more, both vegetables and uh, flowers. I'm moving them out to the garden as and when I get a break and as and when there is um, also a dry spell. So in the May, if you notice, like we have a mix of heat and cold. So I'm just watching that out. Like I said, Mother's Day was there. So that was a good uh, starting for me to kind of move things out. But I did not move everything. So I'm like uh, watching the weather and moving a uh, few. As an example, Indian goats and Indian vegetables, most of them are in. Still, when I say in, I moved it out of my... Um, protected area and it's try getting acclimated outside i didn't put in the ground i'm just having it in the mini greenhouse you see behind me right so i'm just putting it there and as and when i see it starting to become root born i'm trying to move it along with the weather watch so that's what pretty much is going on in my garden from a vegetable point of view this month is definitely a busier month when it comes to my garden because my fruit like i said my fruit trees and plants would start producing so i have to like kind of take care of that along with moving the um veggie starts out so it's been a busy uh month overall and uh, but weather wise it's been cooperative so as and when i get a break i'm able to come in and take like small small garden jobs and try to do it that's that's how my may has been going and uh, i'm also working so for june to end uh, start beginning june i'm also working towards setting up my herb space so as you know, like I start a few herbs from uh, winter sowing. So I'm just like potting them up, moving out, potting them up and um, trying to have my own herb uh, garden. So that's one thing I'm personally working on in my garden. Uh, when it comes to this episode, I would uh, cover the fruit uh, trees and shrubs I talked about last time. And also I'll do a quick peek into the um, my uh, garden bed and uh, show you what is growing. When you look at it, it's still not started producing. So you might see like mostly greens are like small starts. And uh, but let me give you a walkthrough. But primarily this episode, we will cover uh, the fruits. Like I'll try to see how you can stagger different fruits within the garden space that are suitable for our Pacific Northwest. So you can kind of like have a continuous fruit uh, season coming in. I'm also expanding my uh, fruit collection. I'm just taking advantage of the spring. This is this is a very good month. Um, reason being like uh, the nurseries are like kind of like they want to clear off your spring uh, stock and then move towards summer big time. Or some of the established um, fruit only or nurseries, those might kind of start winding down in June. So they might run some nice sales, but still established plants and so on. So I'm taking advantage of that and adding more uh, more plants to my food forest in the So I've added a uh, few more berries. I'm exploring interesting berries this time. And I'm also adding more strawberries. Um, so I'm kind of playing around in my uh, food area. So I'll show you that as well. And um, then I also will talk about like, as and when I moved my vegetables into my veggie bed, I focused on a couple of techniques there. It, it'll be a quick one. Like I said, like we'll cover about the companion planting. And now you can also see the square foot gardening I told about the last episode. You can see how I'm implementing it. So let's get started and see what I have got. Fruits. As you all know, this area is very much suitable to grow different type of fruits, especially berries. There is like tons of berry options you can grow here with ease compared to other parts of the uh, country. Uh, when you come to the Pacific Northwest, especially like the Washington weather, you have options of apples, you have options for uh, strawberries, blueberries, grapes, plums, peaches. So the, name any variety it grows well here, the pears as well, right? So fruits are something, if you are intending to do, go towards um, edible garden, 
Fruits is something you I would definitely encourage you to have a look at. It's it's a process and it is pay, uh, it involves patience, but it is a good um, reward at the end when you actually invest in a fruit uh, orchard. So coming to my garden, uh, we were lucky. Uh, and I was also picky at some point, like when we were looking for a house I needed uh, with established uh, fruits because I knew like starting up from a fruit is going to take few years for me to establish. Uh, uh, so I, we kind of uh, got lucked out and we came to a house that had established fruit trees. So a quick idea from a fruit tree point of view, we do have cherries, we do have pears, the um, standard European pears and Asian pears. We do have apples. We do have plums. These are like kind of a fruit trees as in a tree we have in our garden when I uh, we moved in. I ended up adding a lot and uh, some of it is starting to produce, some of it is yet to produce and so on. So I, I, I keep adding like as much as where I have a place or where I have an opportunity, I want to add like an edible. And uh, like I said in the last episode, I'm more into perennials. As well when I do that so fruit and um, fruit addition into the garden goes well with my perennial option and an edible option so I'm definitely looking out for different kind of fruits and trying to add it to my garden so when it comes to the next one is like from a shrub point of view I I primarily um, focus towards berries because that's like a quick one small maintenance and then like it doesn't take a lot of space and um, you also have like quicker reward for the berry so i've uh, researched a lot and i've also like spent a lot of time and effort to kind of establish my berry garden so when it comes to berry I do have strawberries uh, i'm expanding the bed as and when we go like i told you and uh, we do have blueberries um i started to have um, uh, raspberries this year my raspberry might not produce because I was trying to move around the garden so I had to give away my established canes and I'm like trying to move things around but that's part of the process uh, overall right some some year I might have one fruit and the other year I might not have but that's that's where having multiple options and having a continuous supply gives me that reward so I do have raspberries uh, I'm blackberries you know with this weather like you have to like uh, especially how invasive certain type of blackberries is i did not get into blackberries but i'm still researching and trying to find one so i settled on a boysenberry it's yet to produce so i'm going to try uh, it's going to take at least next year for me to start producing so that's one thing i was looking at and um, one thing i'm excited about for this year is the gooseberry yes gooseberry grows very well here and it is a perennial it's not the amla we get back home, back in India. This is a gooseberry that is naturalized for the um, uh, North American weather. So there are different types of gooseberries you have. So that started producing for me this year. And I also have like, uh, with respect to berries, there is a lot of innovation that happened when it comes to the um, fruit industry. There has been a mix and match of different kind of uh, fruits that came in. And so jaw strawberry is another good example. It looks like a gooseberry, but it tastes different. So that's one thing I'm trying. Goji berries are another one I have uh, trying. Goji is egg to produce. I was hoping this year it will produce, but I don't see significantly. But yeah, hopefully next year I'll start having gojis. And um, I have also added lingonberry and so on. So there is like a lot of berry options. If you go, you can really get creative and uh, also try to like um, plan it in such a way that if you have a break for a month you get to go towards the next berry in Gran Madri. so that way blueberries are one thing like that's kind of established in my garden i did add few more after we moved in but we did have we did start with some blueberries so if when i show you and you look at my plant the reason it is big is because it is an established plant i'll also quickly show you a smaller one which i started that also started producing this year so blueberries in that context it is strawberries yes we had a patch but i had to redo and strawberries typically like you have to continually uh, continually like uh, adding it because the life cycle of a berry is about three years uh, three to four years so you keep adding the runners i try to produce runners and also strawberries was predominantly a june bearing for me so i try to add an ever bearing so i have a continuous supply my kid as an example like he is he loves strawberry so i, I was looking for options on hey how do i in, increase my productivity 
so that's one thing i started adding and um so that's yeah i'm, I'm adding few more uh fruit trees but that's like uh three four years from now i'll start getting produced examples are figs and um there is persimmons also that's one thing i'm trying to add but those are all like far away from a produce point of view i kept adding in batches and um i also added um, an apple tree so that's that's another one i added this year especially especially because I, I cleared out some space and that had got sun and i'm like okay what can i uh, take advantage of this place is i got a columnar apple tree I'm hoping it produces, it's right now blooming. I'm hoping it produces this year. If not next year, I'll start producing. Columnar is another option for you. If you have like smaller space, you can try that. I'm exploring a columnar pear. It is not available everywhere. So I'm trying to reach out to nurseries who make a columnar pear for me. And I want to add a couple of more pear trees, but uh, a columnar apple is wide, uh, widely available. So try that out. La I know I showed you about an espalier, how you can train. That's one columnar is another one so you can go to like up to like uh, five or six in a uh, decent size car garden if you're going with columnar yeah when you look at a, a regular tree even at one you cannot go to that extent of like five or six in um, space but when you look for a columnar option you definitely can increase the number so if you come across any columnar pair or other columnars also pass it on in the comments so because many are searching for a columnar tree that's a kind of a new one that we are trying to explore in the whole group and trying to figure out if we can add it towards the uh, garden trends so that pretty much is that covers my um uh, fruits what i have and i would show you quickly a minute or two of each of this fruit and start talking about some of the tips i do in the garden for uh, various times of the year on how to maintain those fruit trees or like how when do you prune i try to cover a few of the pruning episodes for the trees this time i'll focus more towards um, what i do to take care of the berries so that's that's what will be the focus for uh, my fruit tree walkthrough so i'll as usual start with apple for a first fruit tree walkthrough and then like try to cover the rest so if you look at it right the apple tree has got this whole set bunch of um, apples i have intentionally left it to cover it in the video but one thing you will have to do uh, right after the fruit set is to thin them thin them to the extent that it is not overcrowded so the energy gets spent only to the ripe fruits so thin all these smaller ones down so that's that's uh, what you will have to do from a fruit tree maintenance in um, may uh, may is a good time in our weather to uh, do it so if you look at it my apple did have a lot of blooms last time and it most of it turned into fruits so there is a bunch over here there is another bunch over here bunch another down so i'll have to go religiously thin i know it's hard but it is a must um, uh, it's a must when it comes to uh, having good healthy fruits this is also a good time to look for any damages towards um, the fruits and start thinning them out too so uh, keep that in mind when you start with the fruit trees so the next one you're seeing is pear uh, here is the same uh, principle exists for pear like apple so start thinning them down I'm starting to see some damage so i'll take this off and uh, it's as simple as that take this off uh, trash it properly trash or compost depending on how you see the health of it and then um, start thinning them down the second one i'll show you is this one i need to take it out so this comes off the rest of the ones that stays the fruit tree itself thins it beyond a point but it's good for you to be ahead of it and do it and uh, just a quick note since i'm covering this the pink flowers you see are the clematis i just uh, use the trellis to start pointing this time the clematis did a good show so the next one you see this is my plum it's actually an italian plum plum or the fruits are like little smaller so i have to go a little closer for you to show this particular fruit is thicker compared to this bigger compared to the other so i'm going to thin these off and leave only the bigger ones the plum actually produces a lot for me so sometimes it becomes management issues towards uh, the ripening time so i will try to stay ahead and thin them as much as possible so 
whatever fruits I get out of it, I get healthy fruit. The next, this as you notice, right, it's a such a big tree. This came with the house when we came in, so it's like I'm just letting it grow. And this is a big cherry. You don't have to technically thin cherries. Uh, once it starts ripening, uh, the birds are going to camp out here. And uh, so let me see how much cherries this time I will be able to collect. But otherwise, I, I don't have a practice of netting and all of that. I would uh, just harvest the ones that uh, that is available for me. I'm adding a few more um, fruit trees in my backyard. But uh, I just wanted to take a moment to show one thing I'm excited about here, right? This one is a recent addition, very, very recent. You can see the height difference between mine. But this one is columnar apple. So like I covered the espalier, the other option to uh, still have like uh, fruit trees, but in a limited space will be uh, go for columnar. The, as you see the growth habit, right? It's, it's a stick and the, the, the fruits um, grow along the uh, stem here. So it started flowering. I might get a fruit or two, but uh, this is like a first year, so I'm not really going to wet out of like if I don't get one, but I do see few female uh, flowers and there should be fruits coming up if the bees are able to pollinate it well. So this is something, a new addition in the garden and I'm definitely excited to it. I would, uh, in one of the future episodes, I would cover like uh, what I'll be doing around this tree. I'm trying to build a gill permaculture gate so I'll uh, I'm working on it the tiny starts you see are that so I cleared out the space and um, starting off with the fruit and then like working towards it so I'll show you how once I'm done with that work now I'll walk through the berries uh, you notice like that those are my strawberries uh, I did show in the previous one um, I'm also doing some companion planting with the strawberries there are some uh, the fern like leaves you see out there those are all the asparagus I added, right? So those are the ones. The strawberries started producing for me. So when it comes to the fruit season, this is how it starts typically in my garden. I'm trying to like extend to have multiple uh, th or throughout the season, but it starts with strawberry for me. And then I would uh, move on to raspberries. And um, then it goes to my blueberries. Along with that, I would also have the apples and then the pears and then finally the plums. That's how it does. So this whole bed, I'll show you the scale. This whole bed, it is on the other side of my pear, is my strawberry. I added asparagus and I, there are some herbs out there as well, just acting as a ground cover there and some companion plants out there. So one thing I'm doing along with the blueberries is I have so much of space under that have been occupied by weeds. So I'm trying to add some companions to it. So stra uh, strawberries are one thing easier I can add. Uh, I will show you some strawberries. I keep adding, pulling out the runners and keep adding it. Some strawberries have started producing. So when you look at strawberries, this is exactly what I do to expand. Here you see, this is a runner and it will start producing roots. So if you want to expand your strawberries, just plant it uh, down. Here I will move it. I'll have to create a walkway. So I will cut this and plant it elsewhere. That's what I've been doing as an addition as well. And uh, this section primarily might be used by the wildlife. And um, I'm also trying to do ever bearing. So I have something close that I can harvest. And this one most likely will be a combination of us and the wildlife. The goal is they also spare some of my other berries when it uh, fruits late in the game. Okay, the next one you're seeing is the blueberry. And here's one example. This is like a late bloomer for me. I, as I told you in the last episode, I have a row of blueberries. This whole, the green ones you're seeing, right from that corner is actually blueberry all around. I have different stages in which it starts flowering. And this is one of the late blooming ones. Just started setting it fruits and uh, late blooming in our weather is actually helpful because there is a lot of bees and they can help pollinate. I, I see a lot of bees around it. If you want to look at a blueberry flower, right, taking it close, these are the ones. It starts with this and then like becomes these fruits. I had a ton of pollinations this time. So pollination wise, I did not have an issue and that shows in the fruit setting as well. So the next berry I wanted to show you are the gooseberries. Yes, we can have gooseberries in uh, Seattle. These are not the um, amla, but these are the American gooseberries. They taste and the nutritious value is the same. 
so my gooseberry started producing this is this is where it is and i'm also adding few more gooseberries to my uh, garden like gooseberries kind of extend my uh, from the blueberry section so right after blueberries i started adding my gooseberries gooseberries started producing so what you see here is um, elderberry these are the novas and uh, the elderberry started um, flowering this season I, here is a beautiful elder flowers are so pretty elderberry helps uh, it's it's perennial here it thrives in our weather and elderberry helps us uh, has a lot of nutritional benefits so this is something i'm excited to grow and uh, i have harvested a couple of times from this tree i also have another elderberry i added so behind my elderberry i do have grapes i am training as and when it goes i'm just building a temp uh, temp trellis for the grapes the grapes this is my first season so hopefully the rain doesn't spoil the blooming etc etc but if you notice like the grapes started producing i do have a couple of more grapes for pollination needs uh, hopefully it picks up as well and then this this year i'm not too confident but i will uh, hope for the best that i do get some grapes out of it as you know i do have to protect it but let me see the flower and then like a fruit setting and then take it from there so here's a close look of uh, grapes so to finish it off this is my whole um, bed for the berries i'm trying to come up along with the strawberry bed and the raspberries so what you see here is uh, these are all the sections of uh, blueberries right out here and i have some um, strawberries uh, acting as a front row of ground cover so these are all the strawberries you see i will be adding some um, some more ground covered berries as and when i kind of like uh, find some in stock the berries are all out of stock by the time i got to it so here is my full walkthrough of my blueberry and then my other berries start so the one behind you see is another elder i'm bringing up so it's a very small plant i it's going to take a couple of years for me to produce but this is the section from here on towards this whole area is what i'm trying to build as a new setup now and trying to like kind of extend my berry guild so what you see is my gojis and my gooseberries gojis again some more gooseberries and then you do see currants and you do see jostra berries so salal and see the uh, huckleberry goes here and uh, i did start some uh, a big sea berry outside i need to get the male pollinator so i'm holding off to that sea berries started out and then i do have some uh, lingan berries as a uh, border again so berries is something you can try out in your garden for a quicker result and it suits our weather very well so go for it and uh, it'll be exciting to have your own gooseberries and your own blueberries from the garden and the picking is also a fun experience for the kids so companion planting companion planting as the name suggests right it is like find what plants can actually work very well together or also understand what plants do not work well together and plan your garden accordingly that's 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 in essence as a companion planting uh, as an example right so there is like a few plants that are like heavy nitrogen suckers from the ground so you might have to uh, add a nitrogen fixing plant along with it so your ground like your dirt is all like um, with a bias uh, balanced with your nutri uh, you know, nutrients that that's that's one thing the other example if i could give you is like certain uh, certain insects and the bugs are like um, prone to certain type of plants if that is the case you can plant an alternate um, plant that repels those insects this it at a very high level as companion planting now i'll try to give you some examples right so as we all know the beans and peas are like a good nitrogen fixers any legumes for that matter is a good nitrogen fixer so in my garden what i try to do is like as and when i feel there is a heavy um, uh, heavy nutrient sucking plant like the brassicas like the eggplants and all of that i try to add uh, certain beans towards uh, that area or i try to like interplant that with beans after the season is over to fix the um, nutrients in the soil that's one thing i try to do so corn corn as an example is a heavy feeder so how uh, right from the traditional days there is a method that's followed from our ancestral times is called a three sisters method 
So what is the three sister method is like they complement corn, beans and pumpkin together. So corn goes up. It's a heavy feeder. You need to supplement that with a nitrogen fixing uh, plant, which is nothing but a beans. So especially when you go with the pole type beans, you can actually use corn as a trellis. Plus it also acts as a nitrogen fixer. So that's what they do. And then add uh, pumpkin. Pumpkin will cover the whole ground. So it acts as a weed suppressor also. So corn does not need weed. Corn also needs uh, heavy nitrogen. That's how you kind of mix and match plants that act as a companion plant to each other. So that's a good example. And another example, if I have to give you, is uh, eggplant. Eggplant is another heavy feeder. So what you do is like you have a row of uh, beans and then move towards eggplant. So the beans continually supply a nitrogen to, uh, to the soil and then these high nitrogen uh, suckers can actually use towards uh, use the nitrogen that's added from the beans. So what I do, I plant a beans of like, I go more with a pole type because that also saves space for me and I utilize my fence area. So what I do is I plant a row of uh, pole beans. Any legume in this matter is a good one. So what I, uh, both since both eggplant and avarakai, that is a hyacinth bean, are both sun loving. So this is my plan is like, I'm going to have a row of hyacinth bean make it go up and like kind of trellis it so it doesn't shade i i move it away from the eggplant and then i have my row of eggplant as an example so this too i would uh, do as a companion planting the third example which has been very successful for me again coming back to corn right uh in our area raccoons are very fond of corns so the the time the corn ripens and it's ready towards harvest you might lose most of your corn to raccoons raccoons do not like cucumbers so what I do, I plant a row of corn and uh, cucumbers together. So the cucumber, um, I think it's in the thorny and the smell towards the cucumber that raccoons are not um, in favor of. I have personally experienced that. So one, one season, like few years back, I did lose many or we had too many raccoon population in our garden. And then when I researched about it and I came across this uh, cucumbers, so what I typically do is like I plant a row of cucumbers, trellis it and then have corn in the front. So that's another one like you can kind of try from a companion planting. And uh, tomatoes, right? Tomatoes is another example like where you want a lot of tomatoes. Uh, tomatoes have got a lot of good companions, the usual peppers and the beans. Along with that, you can actually grow basil with tomatoes that's set to enhance the flavor of tomatoes. So basil will be a good companion plant. Marigolds. Marigolds is another excellent companion plant when it comes to garden. Um, marigold is known to repel many garden bugs and so that kind of acts as another level of companion and another level of complementing the plant growth. So marigolds is another one. Borage. Borage is another good companion again and borage is also a very good pollinator. So, uh, it's also edible. So borage is another one you can bring into your veggie, veggie bed. Borage can technically act as a companion for many plants. Marigolds, borage, calendula is another good one. So calendula is also an edible um, uh, edible flower. So what you could do is like you can add calendula. It adds beauty as well as it's so easy to grow. Only thing if you are particular about like... Um, seeing your space or like you want certain plants only in a certain place watch out for some of these plants because the calendulas the borage um, they they all try to self seed so you can see calendulas popping up in a different location than you intended it's so easy to replant so just uh, keep that in mind and it's a big edible at the same time a very beautiful and a good companion plant is nasturtium nasturtiums are like so pretty you have so many options out there and it has historically acted as a very good companion plant when it comes to the veggie garden. There is also controversy when it comes to nasturtium on like um, that it's an aphid, um, aphid magnet. That's what they call it. So it acts both ways. The reason people plant nasturtium near your roses or near your vegetable beds is like the aphids go to that. So it acts as a sacrificial plant and it spares your roses or it spares your tomatoes and other plants so that's where it is from a controversy point of view i have read that people calling nasturtium is aphid magnet hey i didn't have any aphid but i planted nasturtium it came in that's that's not true basically like uh, yes aph uh, aphids get to um, uh, go towards nasturtium a lot 
but if nasturtium is not there it would definitely go to one of your veggies that that's what it is so that's another one you could kind of try as a very good companion you have different options you have dwarf you have trailing so look for what kind of an aesthetics you would want and nasturtiums are so easy to see it's a direct so and um, grow. some of these i talked about it's good to transplant but they also do very well in the uh, direct um, seeding Calendulas, Boraj and Astratiums are all uh, good if you direct so rather than like you transplant. But if you transplant it uh, carefully, it will also like kind of act as a good companion plant for you. So that, that's what I typically do in my garden. Like, uh, like I said, I follow the techniques of intense and square food. And I also focus towards a companion plants. And I try to like... Um, mix and match these plants in the order you would see so when you look at my garden you wouldn't see like hey this is my bed of uh, tomatoes this is my bed of beans i wouldn't do that my garden will be like tomatoes beans and then like maybe peppers and it's it's like a combination of it one other reason i personally try that choice is like um if i lose a plant or if i lose a type based on a location I have other set to survive so that's that's typically a model i follow it may, you may not follow that but i'm just giving that as a tip that personally worked for me instead of dedicating an entire area towards tomatoes when i split and match i can also work towards um, one big tomato plant not shading a small tomato plant right so i can move where there is heat and i can also like kind of spread it around so it gets enough air and so on that's one we try so the other one, I think I spoke in one of the earlier episodes is like, um, I try to match um, cilantro with tomatoes. When you go towards summer with the high heat, your cilantro is expected to bolt. So what I do was like, I sneak in cilantros in between my tomatoes and, uh, but make sure it also gets the light. It doesn't, it's not fully shaded. It also gets the light it needs to grow. But at some point when the cilantro grows bigger, the leaves from the tomatoes will shade my cilantro so it, it reduces the bolting. The other option I also drew is like you can mix and match greens pretty much with any of these plants. Eggplant is going to grow vertically, right? Of course, it's going to spread across and so you could kind of bring in some greens as a ground cover. It's technically not a ground cover, but you know what I mean, right? You can surround those area with green. Between two eggplants, maybe try to plant a green. So what you do by that, you maximize the space and you also try to uh, reduce the uh, chances for weeds competing with your existing plants and you try to grow some low nutrient absorbing uh, greens like type that uh, that acts as weeds are pressure it also gives you enough food and at the same time it also helps your uh, garden plants that's one thing you could do methi methi is a very good uh, companion plant you could do in the garden whether you harvest methi or not and methi is something very easy to grow. Soak some methi or sprout, depending on your choice of interest, sprinkle around. That's going to form a lush green um, cover and it also fixes nitrogen in this. So that's one thing you could do. Fava, like I said, is an excellent, excellent, excellent companion plant and excellent uh, nitrogen fixer. So everywhere I try to like kind of maximize my space towards fava. So fava is again something easy to grow, direct sowing. And you could go to fall planting as well so that's another one you could use towards your nitrogen fixing so generally play around with your legumes uh, legumes especially like um, you can get creative with any type of indian grocery legumes we have right i have had success towards just sprouting our chanas rajmas and uh, different type of beans planted chana is another good one in terms of nitrogen fixing and it also has a good um, production rate as well so you can try that so all of these sneak in wherever there is an opportunity and wherever there is a possibility just make sure you don't compete with the space of the plants that you actually want to grow try to sneak these in that acts as a supplemental uh, nutrient towards your garden and it might it would also give you uh, good edibles that you could uh, take out of your garden so end, end result will be like you'll have maximum produce at the same time your soil is constantly kind of like fed in while your produce takes the nutrient out uh, from the uh, garden so look out for companion there is a detailed chart out there with every single vegetable listed there's a lot of options available so i don't pick one or the other here there's a lot of options and all of them are saying the same thing 
So pick that out and then like plan your companion planting. Just Google like companion planting for whatever vegetable you're starting with. You would definitely get a do's and don'ts list. So plan your garden accordingly. And there's also clear instructions you would get in terms of what to plant next, how, how far you need to plant, how close you need to plant and all of that. So companion planting is, <clears throat> has been a proven method and has been like uh, something easy to follow. You might feel overwhelmed in the beginning because like, hey, okay, I'm going out to plant a tomato. Do I have to pick this, that and all of that? So keep it simple. Start with one, maybe marigolds or maybe uh, calendula, maybe borash, maybe bor uh, basil, one of that. Start with one, slowly expand your options next. You can definitely not go wrong with a companion planting, especially when you are trying to maximize your space with intense planting. So good luck trying your companion plant and uh, let me know how that works out for you. So back to my veggie bed, I was, I'll quickly touch on companion plantings on what I'm intending to do. Uh, this is a bed, I, like I said last time, I'm reserving for the heat loving. I still have to bring few more plants down, but I'll at least get started. So what you see are the tomatoes. The, this is a tomato. Tomato and pepper act as a good companion. So I have like a tomato, as you notice, I have tried to follow the square foot planting along with companion planting. So the next one you see is um, the peppers. Behind, just to take advantage of my fencing, I'm actually going, uh, growing bitter goats. That's behind. All of my whining varieties will go there. Onion, I already talked about it. And then uh, I have some, a set of beans. Wherever I need the place to be established, I'm starting beans. This time I decided to go for beans with my um, direct sowing as well. So that's why you see it's it's a small start but it's a direct zone and then again comes down to my pepper tomatoes so this is one set of combination i try when it comes to companion planting i just place it in such a way that my trellis doesn't hit each other and i still have like some ground crawling and at the same time some plants that go up so what i will be doing next is bring in some greens down I'm waiting for this to kind of pick up and then start putting some greens around that will kind of act as a ground cover so here is another example of my companion planting what you see here are my double red sweet corn so sweet corns uh, are here and behind that i do have my peas running so these were the spring veggies peas help fix the soil so and corn is a heavy feeder so what i'm doing is i'm doing a corn and then i also have the um, peas running once the pea season is over, I will also try to do some pole beans out here. I'm, uh, I'm staggering it. So here comes the next set of my pole beans that will actually um, go in the pea space and that will start picking up. And the intent is to take advantage of the fence area to have the trellis running. So here is corn. And I also talked about corn and cucumbers kind of like go hand in hand and help cucumbers. So here are my cucumbers that is there. I will be bringing in few more cucumbers. I'm waiting for the heat to pick up. And as always, I uh, uh, do peppers in the front. So these are my green chilies. I have them in the front. Another similar example, these are my bell peppers and I'm adding uh, beans to the sides. So, and I also utilize the uh, area towards my radish thinning. I'm thinning radish and trying to plant that. So this is, this is how I try to take advantage of the land and try to use an intense form of gardening. So this is the topmost bed that's going to have a heavy feeding. If you remember, I started kohlrabi, I did start fava and all of that, right? So the fava, that area, that corner of the area is what I wanted to work. So I combined fava out there. And then you notice some of my radish had started uh, bolting. I'm letting it go that way that can protect some other radishes. I did uh, sow some in between. So I'll be harvesting that in um, I've already harvested few and I let the others to be bolted, but I, I have few more harvest pending. So the radish will start coming out. So once the radish will start coming out, I need, I'm use, I'm going to use that space towards my um, corn. So if you look at it, the corn is starting to come up. So I just plant it around and that way like one, one vegetable goes up that helps fix the soil. And then the next one comes in, takes up the energy and I would uh, again combine that with like fava for fall I'll have fava here so that again fixes the soil that that's my method I keep following I do have a few more peppers out here I also have some tomatoes out there I um, so wherever I have peppers and tomatoes I'm doing a direct sowing of beans as well 
and um, I'm trying to like kind of space it around that way I have enough space for the beans to grow fix the soil so that's that's my intent this is the kohlrabi and the peas I did show the last one so the four sticks you see is um, again zucchini zucchini is a heavy feeder so I try to close it along with my um, with my uh, beans or the legumes I'm intending to take zucchinis as a vertical growing this time and that's why I have the stick as and when the tree grows I'm going to take off the lowermost leaves and keep it off the ground for so much this is a metal uh, it looks plastic but it's actually a metal so it's pretty strong can hold the weight of zucchinis and that's what I'm trying to train them towards so they are slowly going in and if you notice my radishes are ready to be picked up I will just uh, pick few radishes that are out and uh, start using them I have already harvested a bunch of greens from the garden started collecting my peas radishes uh, like I said a batch had already come out and um, radish greens and peas started coming out so and slowly the rest of the vegetables will follow so another companion planting as an example if I have to give you I have some herbs growing here oregano and then the rosemary this will kind of act as a pest repellent for my entire uh, entrance this is an entrance to from the garden so it will act as a pest repellent and the other one mainly I wanted to show you are the calendulas this is in bloom so I'm just using this as an example but I have calendulas placed in almost every every place in the garden so if you look at it these are the beautiful flowers as well it is edible and I use calendula a lot from the garden so that's what you see I have calendulas as one reliable companion I have sowed borage and I have also sowed nasturtiums in the garden <music> this episode and uh, I'll meet you next month with a uh, different topic uh, until then if you have a topic of interest as usual pass it on I know many are like kind of messaging me directly I'm also part of many garden groups so I keep watching out for a topic of interest and try to pick that up for a month uh, as I said earlier so let me know if there is any specific topics of interest for you otherwise like I'll try to um, uh, come up with another topic for June and uh, start um, talking about that in the next month june is like an exciting month when it comes to garden so june july you'll start reaping the benefit of your hard work right so you'll start your produce would start coming in if you have not done like a sincere spring planting you should have already started receiving your garden greens and all of that peas would have started but june july is really something where it kicks off beans would start coming in and like there's so many fruits would start producing as an example right the strawberries will be the first one that will start coming in so it's going to be a different um, different set of expectation and experience when it comes to garden especially the first time gardeners this is the month of your motivation or a demotivation depending on the pest you have you deal with or like depending on how you produce it don't get demotivated gardening is a learning journey it's an experience and I have more failures than success to be honest but everything is like the next year had been good for me that's how I kind of learned from it and it opened up to a lot of avenue for me a lot of new people a lot of new uh, information and knowledge I could gain from my failures so since I'm explicitly focusing on the first time gardeners uh, reach out in case you have any questions and uh, I would definitely cover it for you in the June episode until then take care happy gardening and stay safe Thank <music> you.